Erasmus. Most Europeans have heard of it. It's an EU program that helps students from European Union member states to study in other EU countries. But what about Erasmus Plus? This is a new program combining Erasmus with other EU education, training and youth schemes. It also adds sport to the mix. A year or so after Erasmus Plus began, the EPP group has organised a hearing to look at how well it is working. The EPP group has brought together European Commission officials, MEPs and representatives of civil society to take an in-depth look at how Erasmus Plus can be improved so that four million or more Europeans can study, train, gain work experience and volunteer abroad in the next seven years. MEP Milan Sver, the European Parliament's rapporteur for the Erasmus Plus programme, pointed to insufficient funding and an insufficiently flexible scholarship system as areas for improvement. Uh, half of the Erasmus students' populations uh, combine studying and uh, working. That, that means that the um, scholarships are not enough to cover all living costs. The cost, uh, living costs in Frankfurt are, for example, 30% bigger than in Leipzig, uh, even in inside of one state. Professor Christoph Eymann, Secretary General of the European University Foundation, a body that represents a group of European universities, echoed this point during the hearing. As a solution, he suggested that grants should be made more flexible and tailored to students' specific situations. Erasmus Plus is a seven-year programme with a budget of 14.7 billion euro. It covers not only universities and higher education, but also adult learning, youth programmes, vocational training and sports programmes. Erasmus Plus funding is open to all 28 EU member states, plus Norway, Iceland, Liechtenstein and Turkey. Milan Sver highlighted a lack of funding from the Erasmus Plus programme in the immediate future as a problem. The uh, new budget, uh, which uh, is uh, bigger for 40% for Erasmus Plus, uh, will be realised uh, in uh, 2017 and not in the next year. That could make a big problem, especially for the national agencies. Sabine Verheyen, MEP and EPP coordinator in the European Parliament's Culture and Education Committee, said that one area that needed to be looked into was whether smaller grassroots organisations have the same chance as others to access Erasmus Plus funding. What we heard uh, from some institutions is that it is difficult to compete with big universities and the staff they have to make a description and especially for the applications of the program you need a concrete description of the, of the concept and what's uh, the outcome in the end and uh, also to, to accompany it with a survey or something like that. On the plus side, Sabine Verheyen was optimistic about the usefulness of Erasmus+. Plus. The soul of Europe is transported uh, via these programs in a very special way. And I think also the skills uh, you get via uh, having this exchange uh, being in other countries for a, a special time uh, helps you afterwards to, to be more interesting for companies uh, when it comes to internationalization also of the company and of business. During the hearing, Tibor Navraksic, the EU's Commissioner for Education, Culture, Youth and Sport, recognised the need to improve IT tools and cut red tape. He said Erasmus Plus had already supported one million students, apprentices, teachers and trainers abroad and that Erasmus Plus is an essential tool for shaping European society of today and tomorrow.